Hello, I'm Eloise and this is my channel and I've just come back from New York. It was just such an incredible trip. Jack and I had the best time. It was so, so much fun. If you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you do. This is my handle here. I'll probably be talking to you about it as we go along. I'm wearing my New York top that Jack got me to tell me about the surprise as my Christmas present. So yeah, I'm just like having New York blues right now. But for today's video, I'm gonna be showing you all of the makeup that I got from America and also a couple of added extras that I got from TK Maxx yesterday because I just cannot stop shopping. <laughs> While you're here, make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you're interested in knowing all about my trip to New York City and what makeup I bought, then make sure you keep on watching. So before we get started, I've got to put my new headband on. I bought this from TK Maxx yesterday and it is so cute. Let me show you. How <laughs> cute am I? Oh, I literally can't cope. My hair looks a bit crazy. <laughs> oh, look at that bit at the front. <laughs> Maybe I'll tie it in a ponytail while we're here. Oh, I just love this. I feel like I'm... Um, is it Daffy Duck? No, what's her name? Daisy? Minnie Mouse? Minnie Mouse. That's the one. That'll do. Also, can I just tell you, this spider bite thing is still here. I don't know what the I don't even know if it was a spider bite or a spot, I don't know. And because I've eaten so much crap, I've got so many spots around my mouth and I have just started a new diet today because it is ridiculous how much food I ate in New York, but I'll tell you all about that in a minute. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my eyes first, but whilst my eyes are being done, I'm gonna let this sizzle. Sizzle? <laughs> I'm gonna let this settle into my skin. So this is the Milk Makeup Travel Size Watermelon Serum. I didn't wanna splash the cash too much, because I wanted to obviously do fun things in New York rather than just buy loads of makeup, which is what I usually do. So, I bought three mini products from Sephora and the rest was from Walgreens. So Walgreens is like, I guess it's like, Superdrug slash Asda. This is a watermelon serum. I don't really know what it does, but I've seen a lot of people rave about it, so I thought I'd buy it. This has literally got 6.25 grams, so it's literally so small. I mean, it feels nice. It feels quite tacky on the skin, so I just put that on the high point. I'm just gonna let that sit there. It doesn't look like it's really done anything. So I'm gonna start off with my eyes. I'm just gonna prime my eyes using eyeshadow primer by, by Urban Decay in the shade Enigma. I've got a concealer from NYX. I've I'm aware that we can get this in the UK, but I thought it was at the airport, I just wanted to pick it up. It's the Can't Stop, Won't Stop concealer, but I don't like pink concealer on my eyes, so I feel like it makes the eyeshadow not go on as well, and I wanna give this palette a fair chance. Okay, that's nice and tacky. I believe you can't get this in the UK. Don't take my word for it. Um, this is the NYX Off Tropic palette. So cool. I haven't played with like these crazy bright colors in such, such a long time. So I thought I'd whip them out today. Don't exactly know what I'm gonna be doing, but we'll give it a go. I think I'm gonna use small brushes for today because I want there to be like a particular placement of each color. What I'm gonna start off with, I think, is this crazy bright purple. So I'm just gonna load my brush up. Looks like it's got a nice amount of pigment. Let's grab a little mirror. I'm just gonna start by stamping this in the outer corner. Okay, yeah, that's lovely. That's a good amount of pigment. Yes, okay. I've never actually tried NYX eyeshadows before. Cause I always find like, they're quite pricey, even though the drugstore. This was $20 and you get 10 eyeshadows. I mean, two pound an eyeshadow isn't like crazy expensive, but I've laid that down, blended out the edges slightly. I'm gonna go in with a clean fluffy brush and take this bright pink. And I'm just gonna go around those edges. I don't really know what I'm doing, I'm just swinging it. We're now gonna take this bright peachy shade and hopefully that's gonna blend out my pink for me. It's actually blending really easily. I swatched this palette in the airport once I'd bought it and I wasn't like blown away by the pigment by the way that this swatch, but how they're going in my eyes, really, really nice. I think this is probably the best way to use them 
by placing down your deepest colour first because I feel like that kind of formula that if you were to layer this purple on top of the pink it would probably just fly away. It's not building up the best now that there's other colours down, if you know what I mean. But it does look nice. I think I want to take the yellow, see how that's going to perform. Oh, yep, yeah, nice amount of pigment. I'm just going to slot that in the front section here. It looks a little powdery, this yellow. And now I feel like I need a little bit more depth. I'm going to take this purple. No. He doesn't want to come out. No, he's not coming out at all. So let's go for this plum. Doesn't feel like anything wants to stick on. So let's try and pat. Mm, let's try to go back to the bright purple. I'm going to add a little bit of that bright orange there. Just into that section. Just blend the yellow, the purple and the pink together. It's not the easiest palette to work with, but it's not going too badly. It's looking pretty, but I do have some slight separation here. I don't know if you can see that little patch. Feels like you do have to pat now that they've layered up a little bit. What I think I want to do now is just add like a glitter on top. I bought the other day the Barry M Holographic Eye Toppers, so I think I'm going to try and put that on top. I think I'm just going to try and use my finger. I don't want it to remove any of the eyeshadow that we've already put down. This is called Asteroid, really, really pretty, like purple blue. Oh, yes. <gasps> That is stunning. Oh yes. I'm just taking the smallest amount each time. Okay, it's kind of hard to blend this glitter out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait for it to dry, do my other eye and then try and go back in with the matte shape and see if it sort of flicks it away a little bit to blend it a bit better. But I do really like the glitter. So pretty. Right, let me do the other eye and I'll be right back. I just pressed a button and I don't know what it was and I hope it hasn't ruined all my content. <laughs> I'm actually really happy with how that glitter has turned out, I think. Um, I've tried to make it a little bit more fluffy on the edges, but we'll see. So, I bought, which I have been dying to try for such a long time, the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. Now, again, I got the uh, small version because I am a tight ass, but I just wanted to give it a go before I went in with the full whack. But I've seen so many people use this, like Nikki Makeup, she is incredible if you don't follow her on Instagram, then make sure you do. She is a phenomenal makeup artist and she just made me fall in love with everything soft, natural, beautiful, glossy. Um, and she, I believe, is a pro artist for or the global artist for Becca Cosmetics. Oh my God, that smells incredible. I don't, it's like shea buttery, sort of vanilla-y, but slightly citrus. It's really, really nice. And that looks stunning, really, really lovely. Okay, on to the next product. Can I also just mention, it was a struggle to get Jack to let me go into these makeup shops. I was literally in Sephora for 15 minutes, so I ran around grabbing things, and then I thought, oh no, I don't need that. Oh, actually, I can go get the travel size, which is near the checkout. So I literally dumped all of my stuff and then <laughs> got the travel size because I'm tight ass. Um, and then I literally had 20 minutes in Walgreens, and then Ulta was too far away from where we were, so we didn't get a chance to go to Ulta. So I went into Walgreens for 20 minutes and literally grabbed everything, and... Yeah, he just doesn't get makeup shopping, even though this is what I do. Like, makeup is my thing. I have to get makeup, especially when in America, where they've got products that we don't have in the UK. Just doesn't get it. So I probably spent maximum 45 minutes makeup shopping. So I just grabbed everything I could and that I wanted to try. So it wouldn't be me if I didn't buy more foundations. Like, what is my problem? I have serious issue. I've been doing foundation wear tests to make the most out of my incredible foundation collection. If you haven't watched them already, I've got three up, I believe. I've now just added three more to the collection, which I probably 
definitely didn't need. But anyway, we don't have these in the UK, so I just got overwhelmed and excited and I just had to buy them. So I got the original L'Oreal True Match. You know how much I love True Match. In fact, I don't think I've even said how much I love True Match on my channel yet. True Match was literally my OG foundation. I still have loads of colours in here. It's a great one because it doesn't go too oily. It's got lovely medium coverage, doesn't sit in my lines. So I thought I would try the original one, the True Match in the glass bottle. Um, I believe this is way too dark for me, but I got three very different colours. So some of these will probably be better in my uh, summer colour. But anyway, in the L'Oreal section, they had cool, warm and neutral, which I thought was cool. So I got the warm one because I've got more of a neutral undertone. I prefer to bring out the yellows in my undertone rather than pinks. So I got a warm nude beige, which is W3. If anyone lives in America, that's what shade I've got. In fact, I'm gonna swatch them all on my face because I think this is a little too dark. Yes, it's actually very, very yellow. I'll have to try that on in the summer, I think but it feels lovely and silky. Okay, and then I got the L'Oreal Pro Glow, which oh, I'm so excited about getting. I've tried the L'Oreal Infallible, oh, the Infallible Total Cover, so I thought I would try the Infallible Pro Glow. So I've got a little bit on my hand. Yeah. <laughs> What? Why am I so terrible at colour matching? They literally didn't have any testers, so I just had to be like, eh, that'll do. <laughs> terrible choice, terrible choice, but that could hopefully be my colour when I'm either fake tanned. I think that might even be a little too dark for when I'm fake tanned. Oh, I'm really upset. And then this is what I'm the most excited about and I will probably use today because it's in a shade called Classic Ivory, which probably will f match me exactly. Much to my dismay, I don't like to be pale, but unfortunately I live in the UK, so I absolutely am. So this is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Foundation. Who hasn't tried the Instant Age Rewind Concealer by Maybelline? If you haven't, have you been living under a rock? Honestly, that is like an OG. So this is the Big Mama version. It is literally huge, so massive. So I cannot wait to get this bad boy on my face. Okay, we might be here for a while. Oh, oh, this is so weird and probably very unhygienic, but yeah, that'll do. Okay, cool, right, let's get this on all over. So I'm probably actually, oh yes, I'm literally all over the place in this video, I can't even cope. So yesterday I took a trip down to TK Maxx because if you don't follow Good George, you need to because he finds all of the best things in TK Maxx. So then when I go down to TK Maxx, I literally buy everything. So I bought three makeup brushes by, I never heard of them before, but they're brushes, bloody lovely. Japonesque, I think it's called. This is the BB slash CC brush and it feels so, so nice on the skin. I thought this would be a really good foundation brush to get full coverage because it's much denser. The bristles aren't as flexible as, say, what I've been using at the mo moment, which is the Stippling Brush by Soeco, which I also got in TK Maxx. God, that blends quickly, doesn't it? I'm going to try and not get that sponge on my spots because it's just going to get infected. So what did we do in New York? My favourite thing that we did in New York was hiring a tandem bike and riding around the whole of Central Park. It was so, so amazing. We had the most incredible weather. It was ice cold, like literally minus degrees. The sky was crystal blue. It was so, so cold, but like lovely cold. And you just wrap up and you feel so snuggly. And we went around the whole of Central Park, stopping off at places like the fountain that features in the intro of Friends. The mall, I think it was called, which is like this walkway with loads of trees over the top. It was stunning. I've got loads of Polaroid pictures as well. We took a Polaroid um, camera that Jack's mum got us and it was just so much fun to just stop off and take cute Polaroid pictures. And oh, I'm so excited to get them on the wall. I'm going to get one of those frames that's got the string across it and you peg on the little Polaroid um, pictures but we also saw the Book of Mormon which was hilarious 
Um, really loved that, but it was the second day that we got there. So by the hour and a half mark of the show, me and Jack were literally dropping off because in the theatre in New York, there's hardly any room for your legs. Like in, in the London theatres, there's so much room. You can like sprawl out, you can put your drink down in, in a cup holder. In New York, they don't even have cup holders. Literally, you're squidged together next to the person next to you. And we, we had all our coat and our scarf on because it was quite chilly in there. But then towards the end, everything started to heat up. And we were like dozing off by the end because we were just so snuggly but so tired and jet lagged. But to be honest with you, like the first day that we were there, we didn't really feel too bad. Like we stayed up as long as we could. Um, New York is five hours behind us, I believe. So we got up at five in the morning to get the plane at, um, at nine, I think. And we landed in New York at 12, but it was an eight hour flight. So we got there at 12, but really it was five o'clock in England time. So we had to stay up for an extra nine hours, which would have meant that it was something crazy like 24 hours that we were awake for. But to be honest, it didn't really affect me. We went to Central Park, got a hot chocolate, but found a huge slice of pizza, which we were so happy about. And then we found like an Irish bar, that had a couple of pints, we felt fine. And then we went back, went to sleep at about nine, woke up the next day at seven and we were fine. So yeah, it wasn't too bad. Before I ramble on, I'm gonna try this NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop, which I'm pretty scared about because it's super, super full coverage which means it's probably gonna crease like crazy underneath my eyes. But let me just have a look at this foundation. I was a little bit scared about this foundation because when I was like blending it in, it looked like it was gonna like move everywhere, like it wasn't gonna sit in one place, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, it's looking nice so far. Not as glowy as I wanted it to be because I tend to like something a little bit more luminous, as we all know. Um, but let's see how... Oh my god, this concealer sets down so, so quickly. So yeah, on the second day, we went to the 9-11 Memorial and Museum. Oh my god, that was just insane. Like, you can't even comprehend. The, the whole museum took us two hours to get around because there was so much information and so many, like, accounts of people. I hear you, Quibbin. You want a cup of tea? A biscuit? Mm -mm. We've got to finish the pack. No, I'm not eating biscuits. Oh. Throw them or eat them. There's like three left. Throw them or eat them because I will eat them and I'll be really upset if I do. Alright, I can't wait. Thank you. Oh, it was just, it was, it was so horrible to be in there but so fascinating. Um, and actually when we got home, Jack and I watched United 93, which was about the plane that didn't actually hit any buildings, it just crashed into the floor because the passengers on the plane actually got up, attacked the guys that were hijacking the plane so they managed to save the White House but they didn't obviously manage to save themselves which was again really, really hard actually really stressful to watch if you ever watch United 93 if you have watched it before um, just just crazy or if, if you've actually been to the 9-11 memorial I would love to know because just really really heartbreaking and also we went to a fire station because Jack's dad's a fireman so he wanted to swap one of his shirts for one of the guys in New York and we went into the fire station in New York and the guy was like so lovely he let us in and he walked us around the fire station and they actually had a 9-11 memorial for three of the guys that actually died which was again really really heartbreaking but it was it was so lovely about how open they were to talking about it so yeah that's what we did on the second day and then in the evening we watched the book of mormon and then on the third day had the whole day that's when we did the tandem bike around central park and oh, it was just amazing oh and also that was the day when we ate at a place called black tab which is like a classic american restaurant like delicious wings for start huge burgers for dessert after these burgers with like three portions of chips and we were like we've just got to go for the, the milkshake we've got to have it even though we were so so stuffed we had this huge milkshake it's on my instagram if you want to go and see it it was oreo milkshake then the outside of the rim of the glass had oreo filling around it and then oreo crushed on top loads of whipped cream and then in the whipped cream was this huge like oreo ice cream sandwich oh my god after that i couldn't move for an hour i could not move for an hour and then that night after the basketball when i went to bed i woke up at one in the morning and threw up everywhere <laughs> it's just overindulgence it was awful i absolutely hate this concealer 
it looks like it's oxidizing on me. It has gone like really orange and horrible and creasing like crazy, not giving me much coverage at all. Like what the hell is going on? Anyway, so the basketball, incredible. So, so much fun. I'll tell you a little bit about it after I told you what powder I'm gonna use. So everyone has raved about this powder since Nikki Tutorials talked about it on our YouTube channel and it is the Fit Me Loose Powder. Now I've got the shade Fair Light. If you watch my channel on the regular, you will know I never, ever, 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 ever use loose powder. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my sponge, which I'm really scared about because I don't want it to leave like a cast on my face. And I'm just gonna like press this underneath my eyes and I'm really scared because I haven't actually ever done this before. Because it just scares me because I've got creasy under eyes and I don't want it to feel really tight, which it already is. My complexion looks hideous right now. I just don't get this whole baking thing, but we're doing it today. So I guess I, I leave that, do I? I'm a bit scared. I'm very scared, in fact. I don't want to leave that on for much longer. Maybe I'll try this when my skin doesn't look like crap and I've used a concealer I actually like. That just looks awful. Next up, I've gone for Physician's Formula. So I think this is called Translucent Pearl and this is the Mineral Glow Pearls. So pretty, isn't that nice? So I'm gonna do one highlighter on one side and one on the other. Whoa, okay, that is just like your glitter. Maybe this would be nice on top. So I bought the mini again, Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Moonstone. So maybe I'll try that on the other side. Oh, that's lovely. But where my skin is so dry, it just looks awful. Just don't get this whole baking thing. It just makes your skin look horrendous. I'm not happy with how my skin looks at all. This, with this on top, looks nice. So now what we've all been waiting for, Physicians of Formula Butter Bronzer. Now I got the shade Bronzer. I think there was a dark one too. I don't know what this smells like. It's really, really weird. It literally, it does smell strange. And also it comes with this like weird thing. It's like a silicone thing. I don't really know what it is, so I'm just gonna leave that in there. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my God, they weren't joking. That is lovely. Isn't that nice? Okay, I'm not just saying this, but I think this is the best bronzer I've ever used in my life. It like builds up beautifully. It's the most perfect color, but never goes patchy. My face just looks so dry and scaly right now. It's horrible. Bugger, I forgot that I got a cream blush and now I've got all this powder on. Damn it. Oh well, I'll just use something else. So yeah, as I was saying, I've never eaten so much in my entire life. Hence why I'm going on a massive diet. I'm gonna start working out again as well, which I haven't done in a very, very long time. Um, this blush is going very, very patchy and I think it's because I've got a lot of powder on my face which is accentuating dry texture. So my face looks like crap right now and I'm really upset about it. Let's try and put some setting spray on and fix this mess. But yeah, I, think, I feel like we ate about four meals a day. It was ridiculous. On the last day, we went to Star Island's Diner where you have your meal and then the waitresses and waiters all stand on the tables and on the benches and they sing Broadway songs and it was just the best experience of my life. I'm just all about that, so I absolutely loved it. So we had um, French toast for breakfast, then a couple hours later we went up the top of the Rockefeller, which was incredible by the way. You could see the Empire State and Statue of Liberty from the top of the Rockefeller. So if you're gonna to go to New York, just go to the top of the Rockefeller rather than Empire State and Statue of Liberty because you can see the boat. So we went up to the top, had a hot chocolate, came back down. Then we went to um, the big pizza slice place again and Jack had chicken in a cone. Yes, chicken in a cone, like chicken in an ice cream cone bizarre but we just had to try it and then we had um a shake shack and the meal on the fly which was red thai curry and it was bloody incredible um so yeah we had about four meals a day it was ridiculous so 
strict diet from now because we've just booked our next holiday to Rhodes, which is in August, so got to crack down on that summer bod. But anyway, back to the makeup. Let's finish these under eyes. So and I think what I'm gonna do is the blue, and then I might even put a little bit of the green on the inner corner. So let's do that. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, let's do a little bit of that green, just so that we can say we've used most of them. Okay, so I think the eyes look really, really nice. I'm just gonna finish off with some mascara. Yeah, um, I'm actually quite impressed with this palette. So definitely recommend that if you're in the US or if you can get it in the UK, because I don't know. But anyway, right, let's go on to brows. Now I don't know if you can get this in the UK, the Total Temptation Maybelline Brow Definer. Yeah, that's what it's called. I got the shade Soft Brown, and then I also got the Tattoo Studio Waterproof Brow Gel by Maybelline in, again, the shade Soft Brown. Now, this brow gel comes with a spoolie, which I'm slightly confused about. Let's read the instructions. So it says, pro tip, remove excess formula from the tip. Okay, so that's from here, I suppose. I'm gonna brush my brows through first. And recently, I haven't obviously been carving my brows out. I've been doing my brows after my eyes recently because I, one, it's quicker, and two, I think it looks quite nice now that I've been growing my brows out a little bit more. So it's suggesting I take off the excess which is strange because surely I shouldn't need to do this if the product is good, no, I don't know. Okay, I've taken off most of that product. The color is quite dark, I don't know. Short, smooth strokes starting from mid brow, then fill and blend towards the start of the brow. So start in the middle, which I would have suggested, yes. I don't know if it's meant to touch my skin or because when it touches my skin it leaves like little patches of the product. I don't know if it's meant to do that. What? Okay. Much darker than I would usually go for. Try the other side. Oh, I'm not sure about these brows. Fill tail. Did that already. Optional. Blend with spoolie. Let dry for one minute. I don't know if I like it or not. Does it look a bit messy? I don't know. Okay, why don't we try the other thing that we got? So Total Temptation Brown Definer. So why don't we just add a little bit more definition and see what's happening? Because right now it just looks a bit splotchy. Darker than what I would originally go for. It was very waxy. Like it's laying down a lot of product, which is not my favorite. Why don't we put a little bit of subversion through and see if that makes me happier. I feel like they need to stand up a bit more and then I might be a little bit happier. No, I just think it's just too dark. But blonde looked very, um, too blonde. Um, to finish off, because I don't actually have a lipstick, I think I'm just going to use my gloss that I love. So this is the NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Fortune Cookie. And because I got a lot going on in my eyes, I think I just want to keep it quite glossy in the bottom. Might add a bit of definition to my lips because they're looking a little small. Nice! Now is my hair going to look funny? Oh god. Hang on, we need to bronze the hairline. <laughs> okay, now my hair looks a bit rascal, but it's okay. This is literally just hair dried hair, so please ignore me. I just can't bother to my hair these days, so um... I have to live with it, unfortunately. <laughs> so this is the finished look. The butter bronzer, I think, was my favourite thing. I thought the colour and the formula was perfect. It was just divine. Loved it. And the smell of it, I don't know what it is, but it's really, really good. Really, really liked the NYX palette. I thought it was going to be a little problematic due to the swatching that I did in the airport, but it's come out really, really nice. And obviously love the Barium holographic thing, but I didn't buy that in America, of course. I think I would love this better with a different foundation. I don't think this foundation is for me. As much as it's really cool, I think it's a little bit gimmicky. But when I'm much more tanned, of course, I will try the L'Oreal 
foundations because you know how much I love a L'Oreal foundation. They never let me down. I'm gonna have to try the powder with a concealer I do like. This concealer is just Crease City ish and it oxidized as well which i've never actually come across before in a foundation or a concealer really really strange do not like that one bit i really like the look i just don't like the way my skin looks and feels it's very very dry and crusty <laughs> the brows are very very dark not sure how i feel about those mm, i don't know i don't know whether i like them or not definitely did i don't think i liked the total temptation brow thing i think that was way too waxy and way too dark that brow gel i don't know it was kind of cool kind of weird i'm not sure not sure about that might have to try it again if you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a huge thumbs up subscribe and all that jazz i'm eloise this is my channel and i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one